This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That cross your eyes. Yep, yep. Sway in the morning. Shade 4 5. 32 minutes past the top of the hour. Citizens, every single Thursday, Kelly Kincaid brings something to you that no other radio platform can do as yeah. well as we do right here at Sway in the Morning. It is first day with Kelly Kincaid where she tries to enhance you spiritually, financially, physically, emotionally. And today, since it's March, it is National Kidney Month. And today, Kelly Kincaid has a special guest for you all. Good morning, citizens. Good morning, Heather and everyone. Um, yes, like Heather said, today is, oh, well, March is National Kidney Month. And I wanted to bring in the best of the best. I have Ellen Yoshi Uchi from the National Kidney Foundation, the New York uh, branch, here to talk about kidneys. And, you know, when we talk, think about kidneys, people who don't understand what they are, you know, kidney, the kidneys are like a, a natural filter system. Correct, Ellen? Yes, that is correct, Kelly. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me during yes. Kidney Month because we really want to get the awareness out there about how kidneys work and also what can go wrong with them, which is right. a very important point. So, yes, the kidneys do filter all of the waste products out of the body, and then they also um, do what's called homeostasis, mm -hmm. meaning they keep the level of fluid in the body proper. So if you're drinking a lot of extra water, which is a good thing, right. but you end up having too much water in the body, the kidneys are the ones who will make the decision to get rid of some of that water. Same thing with anything else that you take in your body. They will filter out what you don't need. You know why I thought it was important to bring you here and really bring awareness to this is because kidney disease is a ser serious problem. It's affecting over 4 million people just in the United States and in minorities like African Americans and Latinos. It's very high due to people with high blood pressure and uh, diabetes. And I got a chance to look at like a lot of famous people such as uh, basketball greats Alonzo, Alonzo Mourning, Sean Elliott. They were affected with this. And um, like Alonzo Mourning had to have a kidney uh, transplant, correct? That's correct. Both right. Sean Elliott and Alonzo Mourning had successful kidney transplants. They were wonderful volunteers for the National Kidney Foundation, um, as was Grizz Chapman. He also mm -hmm. had a successful kidney transplant. And as you mentioned, this does affect a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, it's not 4 million people in the United States. That's just the New York area. Wow. In the United States, it's 26 million people who mm. have kidney disease. The majority of them don't know it. Well, how, how do people know, oh, I have, just because if you use the bathroom, because say I drink two bottles, uh, two liters of water, and I'm using the bathroom a lot. Like, what are some signs for people to know, like, maybe I need to get this checked? Okay, well, first of all, I'm delighted to hear you're drinking two liters of water. <laughs> I have to. That is a really good thing. I like that. Everybody should be drinking one to two liters of plain water a day in addition to anything else that right. they drink. But the problem with the signs and symptoms of kidney disease are that they mimic other diseases. So, for example, you might have dry, itchy skin. Mm -hmm. Well, it's easy to write that off as it's winter. Of course, my skin is dry. You could feel fatigued, have joint pain feel nauseous, wouldn't you think you had the flu? You're not going to say, right. gee, I think I have kidney disease. So many of the signs and symptoms mimic other things, and people wait. They don't go to the doctor. They think they're going to feel better. Or they say, as we all would as New Yorkers, we're running around. Of course we have fatigue. Um, so not until the disease is actually quite advanced do the serious signs and symptoms, mm -hmm. such as maybe blood in the urine, protein in the urine, mm. or someone feeling sick enough to feel that they need to go to the emergency room. So that's a big problem. Right. We want to continue with this conversation, citizens, 888-742-3345. If you're dealing with this issue personally or someone in your family let us know and share your story Sway in the morning shade four five Sway in the morning shade four five 40 minutes past the top of the hour citizens we're talking about national kidney month because it's march we have ellen yoshi oshi here today uh from the kidney foundation the national kidney foundation kelly kincaid is presenting this topic to the citizens today 888-742-3345 and we reached out to you citizens because we want to know if you personally have this or you're dealing with someone in your family that has it kelly was just startled by the numbers that ellen shared with us by the number of people in the united states affected with kidney disease what did she yeah, say kelly over are over 26 million people are affected with this disease. And, you know, there's really high numbers in minorities with African Americans and Latinos. Um, and this is something that, like Ellen talked about, this disease sometimes gets misdiagnosed. 
a lot of people may not know that they have kidney disease. That's why it's so important to get your annual checkups and find out what's going on. Mm-hmm. That's correct, uh, Kelly. And where African American and Hispanics are concerned, the rate is much higher simply because high blood pressure and diabetes are rampant in those communities, and those are the two leading causes of kidney failure. Right. 888-742-3345. Nina is calling from Philly. Good morning, Nina. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing really good. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. What did you want to say? I just wanted to say, I'm 35 now, but I was 18, and I had went for my regular, you know, GYN appointment, Mm -hmm. and they were saying that I had to do, like, a 24-hour urine sample because I kept having protein in my urine. I didn't understand. And then I ended up having to have a kidney biopsy, get tested. First, I had to get tested for, like, HIV, lupus, all these different diseases. That came back negative, and then I had to do a kidney biopsy. I don't quite remember what kidney disease they said I had, but they wanted to put me on steroids. However, I didn't use the steroids. I just kept seeing the the, uh, kidney doctor, the renal doctor, Mm -hmm. and then I developed hypertension. I started taking, I I still take it, lisinopril, 20 milligrams, and when I went to my GYN, actually, last year they said it was no more protein in my urine so i guess good that helped you. one thing developed and it ended up helping the other thing yeah wow good for That's you wonderful. nina how important was it though ellen for nina to continue following through because a lot of times as you said and, and you were saying to kelly as well people get misdiagnosed so how important is it like nina did to keep following through It is really important for people to follow through because, as you've all mentioned several times now, people get misdiagnosed or they just don't get diagnosed at all. And more importantly, once they do get diagnosed, to continue on the regimen of their medication if they have high blood pressure or diabetes, really follow their diet carefully, but take their medication same time every day. I mean, I'm so happy to hear that she's taking her blood pressure medication regularly because that will preserve the kidney. Yeah, and we also, I want to introduce Leticia John, who also works with the National Kidney Foundation. Um, you, uh, not only working for it professionally, you have a personal story that you dealt with kidney um, disease. Yeah, I do. My um, my father passed away from kidney disease when he was 42 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, He was diagnosed when he was 18 with an acute kidney syndrome called glomerulonephritis. Um, He did not have symptoms for blood pressure, high blood pressure or diabetes. Um, He just had a a malfunctioning kidney. Um, He had three kidney transplants um, between 18 and 42. And, um, And in between that time, he was on dialysis for a couple of years. And I don't know if people know what dialysis is, but um, when you're on dialysis, you are you go to a clinic uh, three days out of the week, mm-hmm. and you're there for about four hours, and you sit on a machine, and they, they clean your blood. Um, right. And it's a time-consuming thing. He had to retire from work. It was a strain on, you know, our family. But, um, you know, we pulled through for him, and he pulled through for us. So we had, or I had, a good 16 years with him as, as my dad. What I find so interesting, your father was able to get three kidney trans- transplants, and according to kidney.org, every day, 14 people, at least 14 people are, are waiting for kidneys. And that's a big issue as far as people being, um, people donating, being an organ donor. Um, how, how does your organization like help with people trying to find kidneys? Uh, what, what work do you do, like especially in the month of March? Well, Kelly, one of the most important facets of the National Kidney Foundation's work is to increase donation mm-hmm. because there are over 100,000 people waiting for a kidney throughout the United States. And those 14 people, when they don't get it that day, die. So we're wow. losing people every single day. Wow. So we really advocate for organ donation. We urge people to please go on the New York State website or the website of the New York Organ Donor Network and sign on. It's an easy process. You can do it electronically. And that way, if anything happens to you, you can still live on by giving your organs to someone in need. Right. Ellen, I also want to, for the citizens, because I'm curious as well, um, on your website, is, are there certain foods, anything that you guys list that you can eat to help with the kidney? I drink a lot of alcohol, and I'm sure my alcohol doesn't balance out with the water. I'm just being honest, Ellen. I'm just saying. Um, are there foods and everything listed on the site? And if so, what's the site again? 
the site is uh, kidney.org, and we've got lots of great nutritional information. In terms of the most important things that you can do, one is to drink a lot more water, Mm -hmm. limit your alcohol intake, stop smoking, and very importantly, stop drinking dark colas. You shouldn't drink the dark sodas. You can have Sprite or 7-Up or any other soda like that, ginger ale say, but the dark colas have an enormous amount of phosphorus in them, which Mm. is increasingly hard for the kidneys to um, process, especially if you get too much of it. So it's better to switch to water or the light sodas. Are all you Hennessy drinkers no more Henny Coke, Henny and ginger ale now? (laughs) Wow, I did not know that about the dark sodas. That's good information, Ellen. Well, Ellen Yoshi Yoshi, thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly Kincaid, for an excellent segment today on First Day with Kelly Kincaid. As you all know, that information and others will be posted up on SwageUniverse.com. Check it out. Also, Kelly, where can people follow you? Follow me on Twitter, Kelly Kincaid, K-E-L-L-Y, K-I-N-K-A-I-D. Thank you. Thank you. so much. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.